And hello, ladies and gentlemen, it happened again. What happened again? The high strangeness that is airplane travel on the Mandela affected Earth. Now, I've talked about this before, and I have to emphasize how incredibly hard this is to explain and describe if you're not experiencing it yourself or if you don't go on planes or whatever the case may be um it is something that's super hard to describe in words unless you're going through it whenever you're on a plane and i call it a mandela effect specifically because it's almost like the entire experience of being on a plane completely changed and most of these changes are kind of subtle but not all and um there's another phenomenon that takes place when i'm on a plane and i get into this like deep meditative state now you know not because i don't have any stimulation or entertainment around because i i do actually but i just have this desire and yearning to meditate on a plane every time i'm on one two three times a year maybe on average over the last couple of years it used to be more um there's something really weird going on um i believe the hawaiian islands themselves were mandela affected but i'm gonna get into that towards the end of the video um and i said i was gonna discuss that when i was there but um didn't get the chance to so here let me give you an example of what emily moyer says and i hope she doesn't mind if i share yes i'm wearing an old domino's pizza shirt <laughs> I work out in these shirts. Weird, I know. But they're really convenient. They're perfect for exercise. Perfect. So, whatever. So, I, I commented on the community post over here. Let's take a look see. I saw some super weird visions in a meditation on the plane. This happens every single time on a plane. I kept seeing this prism and toroidal field, as well as an advanced flower of life looking thing. Emily says, I have the strangest dreams and visions on an airplane too. And again, the Mandela effect, this is my reply. It felt like we weren't even moving anywhere. She replies, lol, yep. Like it's just an elevator going up and down. Other places are just different floors of the same building or different layers on the same cake. And I just thought that was absolutely brilliant and very well said. I wouldn't maybe have said that exact analogy. Um, I like it. It makes sense. It does feel like you're on an elevator. The point being... <laughs> is that it doesn't feel like you're moving. It doesn't feel like you're going anywhere. You're just sitting there. Whereas nine, 1999 airplane travel, 2005, whatever, all the way back then too, you're moving through the sky and you know you are okay it's 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 this it's the thrust it's the lift it's that you could feel it yeah i mean when the plane takes off you could feel it too in this situation and you are in the sky per se but some massive key component here is missing once you reach especially once you reach cruising altitude you're like everything becomes extremely magnetic like um it feels more like a mag lev train did um airplane technology improve that significantly 
over the last decade or so to where it feels so smooth now because it still feels that way with turbulence too it feels magnetic like you're being pulled like thrust is not lifting the airplane you're not being pushed it's like something magnetic is pulling the plane and um you're not actually going from one location to another location but it's almost like you're you're moving you're changing software from one representation of a location to another location i know that makes little sense but it's like somebody put in um you're in one place it's a different hard drive and then the other place computerized computerized it's what it felt like keep in mind i wanted to make this important note that even though it was beautiful there in hawaii there was still the same unnatural popcorn clouds there was still the white little sun um and especially when the cloud cover covered it it was tiny and blue so it didn't change one iota 3,000 miles away in the Pacific. The sky was exactly the same. Very unnatural looking. Now, this is going to sound even weird, even by my standards, but when I was up there in that meditative state, I, I kind of wonder, is there an intelligence of some sort literally in the sky or what we think of as the sky on the Mandela Earth? Because it felt like there was something present up there, something alive, communicating. And, um, is a manifesting itself in the atmosphere for whatever reason, some sort of an intelligence, um, which may partially be responsible for moving or creating these magnetic patterns, almost as if it's turning the earth into electricity. Kind of what it feels like. It feels like everything used to be light and energy and matter now it still is but it's becoming electric and magnetic computerized i guess i don't know the stuff i was seeing it was just like shoved into my head like a download <laughs> it was really hard to describe ladies and gentlemen a prism like the dark side of the moon i saw refracting light uh, different very luminescent colors um and these were like and i was like receiving this message that this sort of prism was a representation of consciousness itself in that um we sort of as a species are living in this sort of prism consciousness where we're refracting and reflecting everything back onto us and having this sort of mirrored like interaction with what we think of as the world and it has this very rigid shape to it it wasn't a triangle um necessarily it, it was multi-dimensional it was a, a triangular prism but there was more to it there was more components to it and it was more advanced and dynamic and at this prism I, I was seeing people and how the, the lives that they were living and it was reflecting back onto them what was in their hearts what was in their minds and i was seeing the earth 
and all of that refracted light was being stored as like some sort of information in the center of the earth or whatever it is and that um it was like an eye it was opening up and this this information starts opening up and and it, like it gets bottled up into like a puddle and over thousands of years millennia it sort of just blows up abruptly and reflects everything back onto us in a sudden outburst where they, i see these i saw these two holes open up on the north and the south pole in this sort of toroidal kind of oscillating energetics that were coming from these two holes um and it reminded me immediately of j dreamers and um the plasma apocalypse information for those of you who don't know what that is uh, i could share a link about it but there's some similarities there certainly um and um basically it's like i was seeing all the stored information it was winding its way back up, upward through these portals and it was enveloping the entirety of the consciousness of the earth in this sort of very abrupt and singular moment and um it was very chaotic but i was seeing other stuff that wasn't as chaotic um so there was some consciousness that were not like what i was seeing was that this sort of prism was like the base form the base expression of consciousness of an individual so to speak but there were other individuals that had much more advanced um i don't want to call it the flower of life because there it was different it was different than the flower of life because it was more i don't know everything was interacting and overlapping with each other um and and connected in in this sort of really harmonic or harmonious sort of oscillation um it and it wasn't like necessarily repetitive it was just more like a spiral like a spiral inside of a flower of life and i was seeing um this sort of consciousness and like a horn shape like the shape of a horn you know a horn and it 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 was um it was freaking like uh the movie um donnie darko i was seeing people walking around and this horn shaped portal thing was opening up from their chest like donnie darko and um it was like this wave motion with a hand wave motion and um their consciousness sort of this flower of life sort of thing burst it kind of burst and and uh everything changed the entire setting completely changed and they were on a different world completely their entire existence had shifted so i'm like what the, the you see the differences between imagination and a vision is that imagination you sit down you contemplate you you think of things to come into your mind you meditate on those things but you usually conjure them up right in this case it was just like it just kept flashing and flashing and flashing and it was so strange um i couldn't i don't know what to make of it if this was like it kind of reminded me of the sort of new earth new age stuff where shift in consciousness but then again hey this might be real stuff it just didn't happen yet and you know i think we've learned to be patient by now 
it could be real. Hey, very much this sort of um, portal opening, the sort of everything being reflected back onto us. All these things might come to pass or it might just be just some random stuff I was seeing in my mind for some reason. I don't know. I'm not claiming it to be fact. I just thought it was super interesting that this is by no means my first time that I'm seeing this super detailed, hyper vivid visions on a plane, specifically on a metal tube in the sky <coughs> with wings. And then I, I looked out the window for a long time, like, what is overlapping the world? Is there an intelligence in the sky? Is it alien? Is it AI? What is it? But why is traveling on an airplane so different? Like the elevator analogy that Emily Moyer said, because it's very different. I don't know what to make of it. <laughs> anyway, take whatever you want to take from this information. Not necessarily mean anything. So I just wanted to share it. Um, there was more stuff too. Um, I kind of saw some really weird stuff coming out of those portals. Kind of demonic looking, actually, from the center of the earth. I guess, hell, the center of the earth, right? But they were like the manifestations and reflections of our, like, multiple millennia of trauma, sort of, basically, is what I was seeing this as. Let's talk about this more. Let, let me see if I could do a live stream on my birthday, May 7th on Saturday, which I'll just be at work anyway. I think it'll be cool to share birthday with you folks and uh almost forgot the one of the one of the main things i want to talk about in the video the hawaiian islands um geography mandela effects being very common um i was looking at a map and i'm like these islands seem way too far to the south to me way too far, way too close to the equator. Where <clears throat> in the pre-Mandela affected Earth, just like South America was far closer to North America and not so much to the east, Hawaii was far way more north. If you just look at the Pacific, um, you'll see what I mean. This might not mean anything to you. It's just my impression that you look at the Hawaiian Islands now, they don't even seem that far from New Zealand or Tahiti. Not really. I mean, as com and compared to where where it was, it was this sort of trajectory right now, like way to the south. Now, it's way to the west. Not, no, the other way around. It used to be way to the west and the, more towards the center. And I guess technically it's still the center of the Pacific. But it seems way further south, way, way further south. Like it was more in line with like central California. <clears throat> All right, done with the high strangeness. Now uh, I'll let you go with the month of May being National Egg Month. Whatever that means, National Egg Month. <laughs>